Yeah, hello everyone. I've been promising you a van tour for a few weeks now. People have been asking what it looks like, how I have it set up, and that kind of thing since I got into the minivan. Um, so I'm getting ready to do that today, finally. Uh, a few notes before we get to it. One is not that I've not wanted to show everybody how I had it set up. It's just that it was still a work in progress, a real work in progress, to the extent that I wasn't real crazy about showing it off yet because it was kind of cluttered and messy as I was figuring out where I was going to put things and what have you. So I've got it sort of there, um, me meaning I'm basically got it workable and functional and reasonably comfortable for now, but it'll definitely need a second uh, iteration in time and of course I'll just do a second video when that happens but for now because so many of you have asked I'm going to go ahead and and give you a tour of how I've got it set up at least on a temporary basis where it's workable so with that out of the way let's go take a look so this is a 2003 Chrysler town and country minivan it came to me uh, through a friend who's a fellow van dweller and I've been in this vehicle for about three years so the back seats were already taken out and it was all ready to go I just had to move my stuff in so here I am sitting in the passenger seat in the front. This is the space that serves as sort of my uh, living room and office area. Um, anytime the weather is not ideal, I'm in here. Uh, or if I'm working on a computer, it's, I'm almost always in here because uh, the sun's just too bright outside and the glare for the laptop. Uh, I'm going to do a lot of freelance work. That's how I support myself. So this kind of serves as my office space. And the immediate view from my office on the driver's seat, I kind of use it as storage while I'm parked a little bit. Um, and again, the dashboard up here gets used as sort of a desk or shelf space for storage when I'm parked. And I should point out the obligatory coffee cup. I have to have that. That's a nice big insulated cup that came to me from a fellow nomad friend. But other than that, probably it's a pretty standard thing here. Um, I just sit in the passenger seat when I need to work or I need a, a lounge chair type thing. Um, it has crossed my mind to try turning the seat around, but uh, right now it is, there's not room in here to do the swivel without making some other modifications and turning it around has other challenges. So for now it stays the way it is. This spot also serves as my unofficial recording studio when the wind's blowing so I can't be outside or if it's raining and I can't be outside to record something. Um, one of the challenges for uh, van dwellers who are trying to do video or any other kind of recording is you're really, uh, you're either outside or if you can't be outside, you're in your vehicle. That's sometimes isn't always the best backdrop or the most scenic view, but you know, you got to work with what you got. So not much to see in the front. So let's go take a look at the back, show you how I got things set up in the rear. All right, so you can see it's a minivan. Uh, it's pretty, only a little, little bit of space. I think I measured it out at about 42 square feet. So there's, and, and you know, only about four feet high. So there's only so much you can do, uh, limited options. Um, I use the seat back here, often serves as a uh, jacket hanger for the jacket I'm using at the time. Uh, I have a few underneath here. I have a few things like a shovel and a, my tripod and, um, they just kind of sit behind the seats there. I kept up the blackout curtains for today so I can show you how I've done that. And these are just hung along the, right now I only have them along the driver's side. I have the driver's side of the van faced to the south and the solar panels out there. And so I put these blackout curtains up and that keeps the glare down so I'm able to work on the laptop without too much glare. So the way these go up is really simple. Uh, they just use spring clamps and connect into a piece of rubber trim along the headliner. Now it's kind of embarrassing to admit how long it took me to figure out that simple approach of just using those spring clamps. And I first figured it out when I was in my Toyota Camry and I spent months trying to figure out how I was going to run um, a system to put blackout curtains in for the side windows because I didn't have dark tent and I didn't have the budget really to deal with uh, having it done on a vehicle that I wanted to replace as soon as possible anyway, it's something bigger, so. I late, parked in a Walmart parking lot up in Montana one night, looking at the ceiling and thinking, how am I going to run curtains? And all of a sudden I noticed this little piece of rubber trim that's actually the same as what's in the van here and the Camry. And I reached up and felt it, and sure enough, it was flexible. And I realized then I could just clip curtains onto that. 
So in the morning I went in and bought some spring clips and it's worked great. I use the same approach in here. It's flexible, they're easy to put up and take down and you can move them around and put them wherever you need them at a given time. So that's that. If you're looking to put curtains in, you have anything similar in your vehicle with that piece of trim, that's a real easy way to do it and, and have some privacy. Moving back on, one of the things everybody's probably going to wonder about is power. Um, I have a uh, 90, 92, I think, or 96 amp uh, house battery in that box here that has holes drilled around it and invented. That's my solar charge controller. And the solar panel is outside the van, of course. I have a 100 watt Renogy portable briefcase style unit that goes outside and that folds up and goes in the van actually right behind where my jacket's hanging here that, that's where that stores while I'm on the road uh, there's a little gap between the edge of the bed there and the door so it fits perfectly in there okay try to give you a wide view here looking at the back of the van from the front you can just see the bed is runs the whole length along the driver's side of the van and I just have some storage items along the left side, or the passenger side. So the bed runs pretty much the whole length along the driver's side of the van. Uh, that's just the catch with many vans. You know. <laughs> um, it's only 21 inches wide, which some people think is a little bit crazy, um, but it, it matched the, it basically takes up half the width and that works out well for me. Um, Ideally, I might make it a few inches wider, but it works and it leaves me some free space for other things. Underneath the bed, I designed the legs on it with the space on the legs so that I could put these plastic bins under here. The one in the front there has all my food stored in it. Uh, the second one has all my clothing in it. And quick comment on clothing. When you live in a van on the road in the desert or in the forest, you don't need a whole lot. Uh, if you got a whole lot of clothes, they're always going to be dirty and you won't be able to get anywhere to wash them till you have a huge pile and smelly mess in your van. Or otherwise, you have a few outfits like I do and you just put up with them being dirty a lot. Truth is, you live in the forest or you live in the desert, you can put on a brand clean outfit and five minutes later you're going to be dusty and dirty anyways. So it's one of those things you just have to get used to. That you have to sort of adjust your standards of cleanliness and hygiene and all that. Um, doesn't mean you have to be smelly or really dirty. You can wash up and clean up, but your clothes are just going to constantly be a little dusty. There's just no way around it. So I, I keep it light with the clothes and, you know, wash usually once a week, but I try and get as much use out of the clothes as I can and sometimes I'll wash stuff out by hand if I have to. Okay so back to the clothes and behind that there's just a few other duffel bags. Now I kind of planned the bed I went 12 inch, uh, 12 inches off the floor which gives me just enough room to store things underneath the bed and it also gives me enough room to sit up here. A little bit you know I could bump my head but I can sit on the bed which is great because it gives me when I'm you know trying to get dressed or if I'm cooking inside um, I'm able to do that. So it's really handy. It's kind of the best of both worlds for me on the bed size. I said it could be a few inches wider, but then I'd lose space on the other side. And, and maybe I'll do that after I get some different, more permanent storage solutions on the other side of the van, which I'll show you now. Okay, so on the other side of the van, I just have a, a cheap three drawer plastic bin from Walmart that actually came out of the trailer. Um, I had it in there. Uh, top drawer, I just have kitchen stuff. And the middle drawer, you know, some spices and some, uh, you know, bathroom type stuff. And the bottom drawer is just a, sort of a junk drawer, I guess. You know, some boxes and a few spare batteries, that sort of stuff. Um, in the back here, I'm not going to be able to show you it really well, but that gray bin on the bottom stores tools. It's got, a, you know, a few uh, power tools, cordless power tools, like a drill driver and uh, spare butane for the stove and spare propane and that sort of stuff. The orange box there is uh, just a toolbox for some hand tools. In the front is a another box that just has all my coffee stuff in it. Um, kind of an amusing story. I went from not having a coffee basket maker uh, I was actually improvising on my own, making them out of tin cans and stuff. And then I tried a French press and that worked, but was too much aggravation to clean up. So 
my friend Deborah was nice enough to order me a Melita pour over basket coffee maker for Christmas and they ended up sending two so I had two then another friend gave me one so I have like three so they're all in there with the coffee and the filters and stuff and that'll eventually get downside to something else it's just a basket I have it's just a box that I had and it fit for uh, the, the, what I needed there um, and back in the corner there I have a catalytic heater that I actually come from a friend of mine when I moved into the minivan I downsized my big Mr. Heater portable buddy that it was way overkill and so this came to me and I actually have not used it yet because I haven't needed to one of the other interesting things with a conversion van or a finished van is you get an interior instead of starting with a bare sh metal shell and of course if you want to do a fancy conversion and spend and do all the work then you might want to a bare shell but if you're you know just looking to be able to throw some furniture and get going there's a lot of advantages to going with a conversion van or a passenger van that's been finished so for instance back here i have these cup holders along both sides of the van in the back uh where the armrest used to be when it has seats in it so it they, they, these things are convenient um along the top where the air vents are i have grab bars which is actually handy on the other side getting out of bed in the morning i have you know coat hooks and they flip down i have four of these units in the back here so that's you know not essential but it's really convenient so there you are you've seen the minivan now a quick tour um it's nothing fancy it's not uh ex exorbitant it's not expensive it's just a quick inexpensive way to organize things and make it functional and comfortable and a good place to hang out and sleep um, i'll do something a little bit fancier in the future i think um as i have to, after i but i want to give myself a few months to sort of live with it and make sure that the overall layout i've arranged is working well for me uh, and then i'll i'll uh you know probably do something a little fancier i'd like to for example with that three drawer plastic shelf is i'd like something a little shorter and narrower um to open up a little more floor space and I'd like it a little shorter. So you'll we'll see how that goes. Uh, that, would, that, would, that would make it easier to cook. For right now, when I want to cook, I basically either cook on the floor or pull one of those, like the plastic food box out and set the little stove on that. So that would make it a little easier if I had a different shelf there, I could cook on that. That shelf's a little too high to cook on because it's too close to the ceiling for comfort and it also makes it hard to see the pot. Okay, so one more thing I'll show you here um, quickly is that I do have roof racks on the van and these are gonna get put to good use, I think in the foreseeable future uh, when i got the before the van came to me uh the previous owner had a low profile cargo box up here like a ski style box there's a good chance i'm going to put one of those back on there um, just to move a few less frequently used items out of the van and up onto the roof uh, so they'll be out of the way and i'll also either probably put the solar on the roof eventually or potentially put my bike up on the roof uh, but i don't think i can fit all three up there so it's going to be two of the three the bike may also just end up going if i don't put it on the roof because right now it has to go in the van which is sort of a hassle um, but it works as a temporary solution because the other consideration with putting stuff on the roof is it's got to be low profile and i don't want to affect the fuel efficiency by increasing wind drag much this van uh, has got the V6 3.8 liter engine in it, and when I went over to Tucson a week or two ago, you know, I was actually averaging 28 and 29 miles a gallon, holding it at 65 miles an hour. So that's a big deal, so I don't want to mess that up. And for any of you who are still debating, do I want a minivan or a full-size van, or just assuming you have to do a full-size van, if, if it's one person, if you're traveling solo, and if you are a minimalist or can embrace minimalism and enough to fit comfortably in a minivan rather than in the cargo van the full-size cargo van it's it's definitely i think it's worth looking in the minivan because you get you can get depending on the model you get you can get much better fuel efficiency and you'll find they're potentially cheaper to buy and definitely easier to find to maintain unless you're getting an older cargo van and you plan on fixing it yourself and vans are hard to Cargo vans, you know, traditional full-size vans are hard to work on because it's real hard to get to anything. So just something to keep in mind. Potentially save yourself some money 
all the way across the board. Uh, minivans also are generally the cheapest class of vehicles to insure um, because, you know, they're just aren't usually used for racing and crazy things. And also, I think when in terms of stealth, if you're looking at them to be in a city, I don't think it gets better than a minivan or an SUV. When you get into those class of vehicles, you're a little more cramped maybe than over a full-size van. But if you're careful and you don't put a bunch of stuff outside to make you stand out, or you don't put reflectix in the windows to make it obvious that somebody's like living in there, you know, if you're careful to make it look as stock as possible and just black out your windows, it just nobody thinks somebody's living in a minivan or in an SUV in a Walmart. So if, you, if you're looking for stealth, I think a minivan's worth thinking about too. A couple trade-offs, you're not going to get four-wheel drive like you'd have in an SUV or a truck, and you're going to have a lower ground clearance than you do probably in a cargo van, uh, better than in a car. But if you're getting a conversion van or if you're getting a Class B van, you're going to have probably similar ground clearance to what you have in a minivan because of the trim they put on them and you know pipes coming out underneath and what have you so so just a few things to think about a minivan can be a really great option for a lot of people my 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 suggestion i wouldn't try it with two people but then i wouldn't want to try a full-size van with two people either <laughs> but if you're traveling solo and if you don't have a lot of stuff and you know you don't mind keeping it simple i think a minivan can be a great option for you so hope you enjoy this tour um i'll definitely make some tweaks and improvements as I get settled in here over the coming months. So I'll probably by later this summer or fall, I would assume I'll have some changes made and I'll do a follow-up video at that point to show how I kind of got things finalized. But for now, this is where it's at. It, it, it's basic, but it works and it's comfortable and it gets the job done. So any other questions or anything, you know, go ahead and post them in the comments and I'll see if I can answer them to the best of my ability. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.